I felt a, a hand on top of my head and I turned around and there was this huge female gorilla. She took her forefinger, huge great forefinger, and opened my mouth <laughs> and poked into my teeth. So when I came back, I came, I, I knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to get in touch with this society. In the late 1970s, our Vice President, Sir David Attenborough, visited Rwanda to film mountain gorillas as part of his pioneering Life on Earth series. He saw firsthand the threats that were being faced by mountain gorillas at that time. He reached out to Fauna and Flora and asked for our help. That led to the establishment of the Mountain Gorilla Project in 1978, which initially focused on the mountain gorilla population in Rwanda and helped to establish anti-poaching measures, as well as implement an education program which helped to change local attitudes to gorillas and to forest conservation. In 1991, that work expanded to what we now know as the International Gorilla Conservation Programme, IGCP, and evolved to cover the entire of the mountain gorilla range, so that's in Uganda, Rwanda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Today, IDCP is a unique coalition of Fauna and Flora, Conservation International, and WWF. And that really embodies how Fauna and Flora works across the globe. We work in partnership, and we make sure that local voices are a part of the conservation story. I was so inspired by Fauna and Flora's um, conservation project in Central Africa, which is to do with the International Gorilla Conservation Programme, and how it has turned around um, these gorillas from being virtually extinct to uh, really increasing their numbers. So I contacted Fauna and Flora and asked if I could help promote them at Chelsea Flower Show to help raise their public profile. And delighted to say, of course, they said yes. And I thought, what a wonderful thing to bring to Chelsea, this incredible landscape and those astonishingly amazing and unusual plants. So I think it's going to be really unique. Crucially, this is about collaboration and how when you put people at the heart of conservation, it really turns it all around. Tourism helps to protect the gorillas by providing all necessary things to conserve them, paying park staff, buying uh, materials like uh, uniform, uh, food refreshment that they are using uh, when they are on a camp, by supporting administrative work, giving incentives to the community and refunding uh, the crops damaged by animals. So the, the money that uh, the tourists pay comes to do all those things. This is a piece of Central Africa that we're going to put in, uh, in Chelsea Flower Show. It takes me right back to being there. <laughs> there you go, that's what we want. So as we go up, we go up a huge, great big long trail which goes up quite steeply through the bamboo zone, of course, which is typical gorilla habitat. Right. And then we come up to a spectacular waterfall at the top, which is just a thing of beauty. beauty. And it's uh, very um, evocative of the landscape that I saw there. And it's really nice to see it so close together in, in the garden because it's like that in real life. People and gorillas are, are really up close to each other. And then we have the gorillas, instead of being critically endangered, just now endangered. 
That's a real Thank success you. story. It, yeah, yeah, it's wonderful and this garden is a, a wonderful celebration of what can be achieved when local people become part of the solution. <laughs> Mario Quartier, I was